Howdy, howdy. Hi, everybody. It's time to pitch that book. Hi, Dr. Nelson. Hello, Mr. Jeremiah. How are you? I am all that in a bag of chips today. Organic chips, that is. For all of you non-organic haters, how was your Memorial Day weekend? Did you do anything fun? Are you asking me if I did anything fun or the world? No, no. the other person, the person behind, yeah, the other one, uh, if they did anything fun. Yeah, did you do anything fun? Me personally, yes, we hung out with friends and family. So that's poolside. That's mm -hmm. totally sounds fun. That, mm -hmm. sounds like, that sounds like a blast. I am a little a bit embarrassed. Why is that? Because I did honeydews. That's what I, I did. They they were piling up. And, you yeah. know, since the lockdown and all this, it was like, okay, you've had more than enough time to get <laughs> some of these honeydews done. And so hun, honey, honey did them. Honey there did, you go. Honey did the honeydews. And today it's time to pitch some books. That's right. We have two Unlocking Your Book members coming on to do just that today. Pitch their books to us. Batter up. Pitch the book. So who do we have today? Who's our first pitch? Today we have Barbara. Um, I want to get their names exactly right. Barbara Winter. And we have Maggie Holmes. Maggie we'll have and Barbara. And what is what's right. Maggie going to be talking to us about today? Maggie is pitching her nonfiction book to us. And it really looks like um, a beautiful story of her life and how God walked her through some challenges and brought her to the other side where she can help now lead um, her reader to hope and a future, you know, that God offers through her experiences. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Oh, well, where is she? Um, I don't see her. I don't see uh -oh. I don't see anybody in the back room, so I guess we're just going to move right along. That's the way it works. You want to pitch your book, you got to be here, you got to be on time, um, and you got to have all your tech stuff worked out. <laughs> so yeah. um, that, that's okay. No, no, no big deal. So we actually, we've kind of been on this theme a little bit where we've been talking specifically about comparing yourself and the comparison trap. And we uh, we have a couple of campaigns that are coming up here in July, and then we'll have Unlocking Your Book 2.0 that's going to be launching this fall. And as we start to unpack some of these new campaigns and we're dealing with the messenger life, um, pretty important that we have that understanding about comparing ourselves with other people. Because the messenger life, and you and I, uh, well, you and myself and my wife, Teresa, we're just talking about this specifically for us and for what we're building about the messenger. And while we talk about the messenger life and we talk about messenger books and we talk about those different types of things, that even though we use the word messenger, we're not so much highlighting you as the messenger or me as the messenger, but actually the process that the messenger goes through, because if you're going to speak the message, preach the message, prophesy the message, write the message, publish the message, yeah. you have to be the message. Mm -hmm. And what we need in this hour and what we need in this moment and what we need in this era is we, we don't need just people that can write. We don't even just need people that can get published or people that can preach or articulate. We've got that. But what we need is we need people that are seasoned. We need people that have been through the process that God has taken them through a process and they've yielded mm -hmm. to that process. Because there's a difference. You could preach all day long with your gifts you can, you can actually write an amazing book. You could be an, uh, an incredible author and still not have gone through the process to, so that it's the anointing that comes out. Mm -hmm. We don't need the spotlight on the messenger. We need the spotlight on the message and on the person, the one, yeah. meaning God, who gave you that message. And that's where we're going. And that's what we need. And that's what we're looking for. 
And we do teach marketing. We're, we're marketing heavy. We teach people how to clarify your message. And we teach people how to market so that you are reaching your ideal targeted audience. It's, it's really critical. It's really important. But all that aside, you as the messenger, the highlight, the spotlight, the attention is not on you. It's you are your message should drive attention to the king. Your message should drive attention to the kingdom. That's what your your message should do. And so just in talking, it looks like Maggie's in the back office here. So we're going to go to here in a little bit, but let's just you know stay on this for a minute. Um, comparison. Mm-hmm. So be be aware if you see yourself. You feel yourself, you know, if you are comparing yourself with other writers, other authors, other mess, if you are comparing yourself with anyone, that is something you want to take to the Lord and get it, get it dealt with, get it healed. Let God show you what needs to happen so that you don't stay in the comparison trap. Because if in the, in the wilderness, in that place with the Lord, in that process of him making you the message, mm-hmm. if that comparison thing doesn't get dealt with, doesn't get brought to the light, doesn't get pruned, doesn't get fixed, doesn't get healed, doesn't get transformed, you'll carry it in. You'll, you'll, you'll write a, you probably will even write a great book and really do some things for people because the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, but you want to be free from comparison. Mm-hmm. You want to be free from comparison so that all of your decision-making and all of your writing and everything that you produce and create ultimately doesn't point to you. Yeah. Ultimately points to the King, to the master. Yeah. 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 In comparison, all it does is create interference in your ability to hear from the father, his unique expression that he's wanting to deliver through you. So if we compare, not only are we creating interference, but we're robbing God (laughs) the Mm -hmm. opportunity to uniquely express through each one of us, the facet of his heart that he's wanting to convey through your life. I can't look at other people. I say this because I've done it, you know, done Mm -hmm. it. To, so many times until you just resolve not to anymore mm-hmm. um, because you you realize, you know, and you remind yourself every day, like you have that self-talk, you remind yourself, you know, yeah. I will not rob God of what he is wanting to communicate through me in the unique way that he wants to do it. I won't do it. I will not do it. Father, help me. You know, Jesus, help me. <laughs> yes. And he does. And it's incredible. And you become the message mm-hmm. um, that he created you to, to become Mm. in this life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, I I love what you said there. You, you rob God and you also rob yourself Mm -hmm. and you rob others. Comparison robs God from him being to fully express himself. He's only going to take stage to as much as you will give him. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you rob others from the purity and the anointing that actually will be the what breaks the yoke. It's not great words. It's the anointing that breaks. The, it's not intellect that breaks the yoke. Mm-hmm. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's not experience. It's not even understanding or education, and it's not gifts. It's the anointing. So you rob others mm-hmm. as well. But then you rob yourself of the faith rest life. You rob yourself from unforced rhythms of grace. How enjoyable should it be? Could it be? Will it be when you are fully yielded? Let him let him crush and cut off the comparison so that your identity is only in him. Mm-hmm. Your, your definition of, of peace and, and life and joy and happiness is not in how things are going, but in who he is and where he's taking you. That's the faith rest life. Mm-hmm. And so there we go. Yeah. So we just, we, we, we're, we're just, you know, we want to stay in tune with what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us now in this hour about the messenger life. Yeah. 
kind of a little bit of a play on words. You're the messenger, but it's really not your life. It's mm -hmm. his life. So amen. Hallelujah. Let's do All this. Right. Let's go to Maggie. Do you know? So she's pitching a book to us. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Well, let's rock and roll. Who's ready? Everybody say Maggie. Hello, Maggie. How are you? Welcome. I'm to the good. Show. I'm good. Hey Maggie. hey, Maggie. I see a guitar in the background. Is that yours? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yep. So you play? You, do you sing too? I don't sing. I play. I sing for myself. I sing for the Lord, but I don't sing out in public. Okay. All right. Well, we won't put you on the spot. Not today. Maybe next time. Maybe next time you play <laughs> play, play a little bit for us. Yes. So we're excited. I see here that you are pitching a your book today, your nonfiction book, and you're saying you really want to target women. Is that yeah. right with yeah. this book? Okay, I was reading about your story, and it's just it's gripping. It's really gripping what you have. So uh, yes, we would love for you to go ahead and pitch that book. <laughs> no. Okay, I feel like I've um, uh, been waiting for this what we're doing right now for 20 years. So wow. here we go. Um, <clears throat> my book starts or my story starts when I was six years old and my life was shattered when my dad passed away with cancer. Um, I wondered at the time how God could have left me here without my dad. I grew up and my life began to resemble the struggle that was going on in my heart. And I found myself in a broken marriage. My, I was broke as well. Um, I battled a, a hereditary uh, illness. And I had three daughters and they had it as well. So my life was chaos every single day. And I remembered some Bible verses that I, um, I'd seen in the Bible when I was growing up that made me think that God should be working in our lives right now. And so I started to cry out to God and ask him for help during those times. And um, nothing happened for a while. And then finally I ran into a problem that I couldn't solve myself. And I, I left that problem with him at, with him and he answered it. And so after that, um, this is where my working title comes in. I called it, uh, my working title is called My Amazing Life. So after that, at, when problems would come along, and that was daily, I would leave them with him when, when I could, because I didn't always have faith for that. But the more I learned, the more I was able to leave the problem with him, the more he would answer. And God has helped us... Um, through many, many situations. Uh, they're all written up in the book as um, at testimonies, but they're in chronological order. Uh, he's taught me how to hear his voice through dreams, visions, his still small voice, through the prophetic. He's, he's healed a lot of my emotional wounds. He's helped me. He's given me insights raising my children so that I would know uh, what to do in different situations. Um, yeah, he helped. He brought me into learning how to live uh, in his financial system, prospering. He took me from a desperate, desolate place, feeling like I was fatherless, to giving me help and hope and a future. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I want to share with other people. I want to um, bring them into a relationship with God like that, where they're experiencing his love. I love the first part of Ephesians 319 
where it says that um, in, a, in the Amplified Version, that we can experience his love at not, not just um, know that, it, that he's there, but to actually experience his love. And that's what I want for women. I want to empower women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Maggie, so, uh, thank, thank you for being so, so open and very vulnerable uh, right now. Um, you know, a lot of times in, in, the, in the church, in the, the, the Christian world, we talk about uh, the crushing, you know, and yeah. you, sometimes we use that kind of lightly and sometimes even flippantly. But, you know, I, I, I know I can tell for you the crushing is, is not light. It's not flippant for you. And sometimes even the, the word or the terminology, the, the crushing of the Lord, we tend to look at, at that as a negative because it does define something when you say the word crushing. It means to exhaust. It means to make something smaller, less than it, than it was. But God operates from an upside down kingdom. So while in the world, outside of Christ, outside of the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, crushing certainly does carry a negative connotation. But in the upside down kingdom of God, because he's not limited to our natural realm, crushing in the Lord means producing something. Yeah. That crushing, when God crushes something, something good comes out of it. And the crushing is to get the good out of what it is. So Absolutely. when it's when it's like this, when it's a, a grape, you know, or it's whatever, if, let's just use this analogy, illustration. When it's a grape, it doesn't have the full potential. So when God takes it through the crushing process, then it's actually what comes out of that, that, that press, and which is what he's really after. And that's actually what we were just talking about before you came on about the messenger life. So I just want to start by, I say all that to really to commend you for coming on here to uh, share your heart, to be vulnerable and saying yes to the crushing. And sometimes, sometimes we think, and I don't know if this was you or not, sometimes we think that, well, I didn't really have a choice in the crushing. It just happened. But actually you do because while the events and the circumstances and the situations were out of your control, we still have the opportunity to choose how we respond to that crushing. And we don't always respond real great, but you're here. Yeah. You're here now. You gave God your yes. You showed up. You went through the process. And now something really good, beautiful, amazing, powerful, and anointed has come through that crushing. And God will use that crushing so that other people can taste and see that the Lord is good. So I just, I wanted to start there and commend you for being brave and letting God do that with you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's beautiful, Maggie. And it, it's just the result, the fruit is joy coming out of you. So much joy. The oil of gladness is mm. just oozing out of you. And um, I love what you said in the last line of your, the pitch that you sent in. Um, God took her, meaning you, from a lonely, bleak existence and gave help, hope, and a purpose. Yeah. And um, and ultimately, I would think then that's what you're wanting to lead your readers into. Is that yeah. correct? That's Through right. your book? Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. The other thing that I was hearing as you were talking is just this old, this foundational question that so many of us have, which is, where are you, God? You know, yeah. you, you referenced at six years old going through something and going, how could God let this happen? Which as a child is, is normal. Any of us, you know, we can relate to that. I can relate to that. And as an adult, I can relate to that. And we, we have that question, where are you, God? And I almost could really see you 
um, weaving that in often in I your, do. well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Because, and I, so then to affirm that, that's so good that you're doing that. I feel like that's what's going to, that will be what grabs people, your reader, these women that are reading going, yeah, I've had that question. Where are you God in this? I've had that question. Where are you God in that? So let me ask you then in what, how are you using that throughout your book? That sounds amazing. Um, when I, when I run into a, a problem or a challenge, uh, something going just the wrong way in my life, um, especially at the beginning when I'm really searching for him, uh, I left things with him. All right. No, I, I would give him my problems and I would give them and I would give them and then I'd take them back and try and fix them myself. Mm -hmm. And that's when he, he wouldn't answer. But when I actually took a problem and I left it with him, then he answered. And it's, it's that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But he's also, you need to be able to trust him and have faith and leave the problem with him. And that comes from learning what the promises are. And once you learn how, what the mm -hmm. promises are and that he's faithful to those promises, and when you can have faith for those promises, he will answer. And I've had it happen over and over and over and over again. So the amount of wow. miracles and answers to prayer that I live in and, and have lived in me and my family, it's amazing. And I keep coming up with more, mm -hmm. like remembering more of them. So. Mm. Yeah. Maggie, what, what is the, the thing that you're really hoping to get out of this this session, this unlocking session, what are you really hoping to take away and walk away with today? Um, well, I wanted this experience for one thing <laughs> to mm -hmm. pitch in my book. Sure. But I also would like to get published and I'm hoping to get published like in six months from now, possibly. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to take that one more step mm -hmm. and see how far away I am. Yeah. 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 How many uh, now, where are you at in the writing process right now? How many words, what chapter, what clarity, where are you at? Well, I've got 75,000 words written in these, in these testimonies. And I wow. put them in chronological order to a point. There's some teachings in, in, in between. I can see taking those out and having a devotional alongside the book of testimony. Yeah. Like it. And um, at the bottom of each chapter, there's a prayer to bring people along with me. Yeah. Um, I like it. <laughs> I have my daughter um, who isn't, she's a marketing coordinator. She has experience in in marketing she's she's like editing for me right now and going back and forth with those stories wow um, i have had four people read the book other the manuscript and i have four that are reading it right now uh i have some of the stories up on a website that i didn't publish a lot i just i would go i, I belong to her um i speak a group where i go and speak i've spoken like 120 130 times in Four problems, two states. <laughs> wow. And so when I would go, I would hand out my business cards and I would send them back to my website where I put these stories up. They're kind of rough yet on there, but I I did that. And um, and then God has been helping me put, like I took them all off. I've been putting them, he's been helping me put them in order. Mm -hmm. So, Are you a yeah. teacher? No, I'm not a teacher. I, I'm I. I do teach youth groups and 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 those types of things, but I'm not a an educational mm. teacher. So yeah, maybe I should clarify. Do you teach? <laughs> yeah, I teach. I teach Bible studies. I teach okay. youth groups, that type of thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that 
a desire for you? Is that a passion for you to, to teach this content? Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What do you want that format to look like? Well, right now I know that I wake up in the morning and as I'm reading through the Bible, just things come out to me and I grab my phone and I tape them and I tape all the other ideas, thoughts, scriptures together um, on my phone. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to type them out. And the ones that go along with my, with my book, I will do Facebook lives or, you know, videos with them. I have some that I would like to do with videos and set them as teachings. I, I do have a bit of a passion for teaching women their value, even in the church. Yeah. And um, yeah, I have it. I was prophetically told once that I was bold, <laughs> unique, different. And, and I had just asked the question right before that, God, can I talk about the controversial issues? <laughs> And that's what I was told right then. It's like, okay, but I'm cautious. What do you mean? What do you mean you're cautious? I Talk don't about want, what? I don't want to hurt. I don't want to um, hurt or offend, but God's first. And what I believe God's saying is first. And I would rather touch someone's heart with what God is saying and draw them into a relationship with him and then have him teach them out of some of the things that they believe that they're wrong. Um, but I won't hold back if somebody asks me a question <laughs> about those specific issues. Do you mean, do you mean you're cautious about putting yourself out there? Uh, no, not really. I just, uh, right now I just, I just got a new camera and I set myself up with faster internet. So that because I live in a small town and uh, we don't, didn't have that. So right now I do. So mm -hmm. I can start doing live videos and, um, mm -hmm. and my daughter is going to help me with putting other content out there. Um, I yeah. have three, three, actually I've got four daughters, all of them leaning into God, which is exciting, but they're all willing to help me. And they're really three, three, especially, are really good with media type things so good job mom god, god set yeah. me up to success <laughs> yes so great yeah you're cautious with the sensitive nature of your testimony and stories is what is that what you're saying then yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's good that's good man mm -hmm. yeah you're you're just primed and ready to go maggie i mean yeah you're like a little energizer bunny just I feel like, and I just really want to encourage you, you are such a beautiful model for our, anybody that's watching right now to see like just the, the purity and the joy and the humility in executing and implementing what God has, has, has mandated you to do as, as a messenger, you know, talking about the messenger life and you're like, you're getting you're doing all the spiritual things and you're giving him your yes and your heart is right. But you're also bringing in the practical. You've got a camera, you up your Wi-Fi. You're like, you are stewarding well. Yeah. And it's all, it's this, just this horizontal growth, you know, that you're yeah. laying out and you're just ready. I just see it like this flourishing garden, just ready to leap. You've got a, a launching pad that you're, that the Lord is building and it's really exciting to see um you're reminding me to remain in that place you know to remain in that that childlike joy and zeal over the call of god you know and never um i just I, you're really inspiring i just mm -hmm. wanted to encourage you thank with you. that mm -hmm. thank you maggie did you say the name of your book did I say what? Did you, did you, what's the title? Did you say the title of your book? I said, uh, my working title is my amazing life. My amazing life. Right. And what, what does that mean uh, to you specifically? That I'm living a life that I never imagined. Hmm. Like I had no idea. Like, 
well, I, I say that when I was a kid, I did have a bit of an idea that God should be working in our lives, but I had no idea that he would be so present and so able to help and so willing to help. And he's doing and has done things in my life that have made it so that I'm living a life that's beyond what I see around me. Although I do have some friends who are living amazing lives now too, but um, it's just, it's just beyond my wildest mm -hmm. dreams, what I'm living. Like yeah. the financial help, the like miraculous things, even healing. My daughter was healed of um, deja vu seizures, which are left temporal lobe epilepsy. <laughs> my, I, yeah. God helped me through my husband's stem cell transplant. We had miracles during that time. We've had financial miracles. We've had, yeah, big ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. lots of things. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you have a subtitle? Have you thought through a subtitle to go with that? Um, my amazing life with God. But I also have, I have had dreams of, uh, of God as as my father mm -hmm. and also the king and but I did look that up I looked up um, my dad the king because mm -hmm. of a dream I had my daddy the king has already been used mm -hmm. but my dad the king hasn't but yeah I had mm -hmm. I've had a, a couple of dreams where mm -hmm. he's my dad and he's the, he's the king and he can mm -hmm. do things in my life to straighten things out move things around and fix yeah brings that other people can't yeah so. the re the reason i ask is because um if you haven't i feel like that is a real opportunity for you in that subtitle to um hook people with something that's almost the, the pain point that people relate to you know yeah. um maybe it's your test just like jeremiah was really tapping in on the crushing that you've you've walked through and you're going to share that in your book and that's what you know those stories and those testimonies make what you're writing about the the hope that you're leading people to relatable mm -hmm. and so i mean jeremiah can speak into this more this is really his area of expertise but um i feel like there's a real opportunity to even um almost the opposite of you you know if you're if my amazing life is the title it's almost like um finding hope through trials or you know finding joy through crushing or you know the just something yeah. that just really the re, the potential reader because that's where you get people to turn over the book and read right. the description so your yeah. your cover is what the imagery is what makes them read the title the title makes them read the subtitle the subtitle makes them turn it over and read the back the back seals the deal gets them to get the book right yeah. and so it's 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 fascinating but we all kind of work that way yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. And you're you're you have a daughter in marketing. And so I mm -hmm. think, you know, she definitely could help you hone in on that. But I just felt like that would be some that pain point yep. needs yeah. to be present on the cover. Otherwise, yeah. people will go, I can't relate to that. I'm not living an amazing life. And you're going, I know that's me. That's my story. That's why you need my book. So you got to right. let them know how that you relate to them on the front. Yeah, that's very good. And you have to flip the script. I agree with Chrissy so much. And as a writer, as an author, as a messenger, whatever you're producing, the content that God is putting on the inside of you and then you're producing, you have to flip the script so that it's really not about your amazing life or your amazing story, but how you're going to help them. And so right. I agree with Chrissy. I almost see the, and of course, this is, you have to pray about this, but I almost see the your your title, My Amazing Life, is your subtext of your amazing, my amazing life, how I came out of and went into. So how I came, God brought me out of and took me into. So my amazing life of how God brought me out of ABC and took me into XYZ. And then that creates this message, this sentence that is very relevant to a lot of people and is very, very clear. And maybe the, the title does have something to do with, you know, where are you, Lord? Uh, yeah, I was where, thinking that. 
you know, the, you know, something about crushing the God of crushing and where is God in the crushing? My amazing, my amazing life of how God took me out of ABC and into X, Y, Z. Okay. That sounds like it'll work. Yeah. Sure. If I saw a book with where are you God or where were you God? Where were you? you know, yep. Woof. I'm like, even me right now today where I'm full, I'm full of faith. I'd be like, I want to at least see the, the story behind the story here. I want to see this person's journey. I'm going to read the back cover, mm -hmm. you know, um, you've and tapped you identify into them right there. Yeah. Yep. And you have yeah. that, like you carry that. So this isn't being pulled. We're not pulling something out of nothing. This is what you're carrying. And the other thing that I really see you doing is you are unpacking and you probably use this verse. Uh, you're unpacking for people the how to with the verse that says, cast your cares on God. Absolutely. He loves you. You know, it's like yeah. you're telling us how to do that. And I've often I've I've been be sat before the Lord and gone. Teach me how to do this. Like, yeah. yes, it's a principle, but I want to know how. How do I actually leave it there? How do yeah. I leave it there? And you are, you've walked it out. You've got the testimony of the authority to say, here's how you leave your cares at the feet of Jesus where they belong and how yeah. you walk away into your amazing life <laughs> and yeah. live it to the full. That's you know? the teaching. Yeah. That's the teaching element. That's the teaching uh, anointing. Because you can't just tell people what. You got to tell them how. Yeah. And that's the game changer. That's what moves the needle when you tell people how to go from where they're at to where they want to go. And in this case, they also want an amazing life. But they want to know how, how do I get that amazing life. So tell me how to get that amazing life. Yeah. 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 I would read that book right now today. I would read that book because I hunger. I hunger yeah. for that. I want to grow in that area of leaving things at his feet. So this is powerful. Yeah, really excited for book. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say that again, Jeremiah. I would publish that book. Absolutely. That would be that would be a kick in the pants as we say <laughs> in the south. Uh, I love. I love it. I love it a lot. That's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yep. yep. So, well, Maggie, this has been fun. And we've really <laughs> enjoyed spending time with you today. And thank you again for your vulnerability, your your joy. It's just contagious. So yes. um, I'm, I'm really soaking in this time with you at, on mm -hmm. a receiving end, too. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and Maggie, would you do something for us just in this video? on the Unlocking Your Book Facebook page, would you just comment and, and, and share your link to your Facebook page and Instagram just so we can be following you? Okay, my Facebook page, yes. My I don't have Instagram, but I'll get on that with my daughter. We can oh, start with Facebook, yeah. I do, have, I do have Instagram, but I haven't put much on there yet. That's okay. You'll now get you there. Can, <laughs> you can put the same content on Facebook as, as you do on, or the same content on Instagram as you do Facebook. But please just drop that link inside uh, inside this video, inside this live stream, just in the comments. We'd love to uh, see what you're doing and, and be a part of the process and be a part of the journey. Okay. I'm going to start um, the website. I, I've gotten through all of the 38 first uh, videos and yep. I've some of the other ones, but um, I will start that new website. I've saved the domain name MaggieMayHomes.com for a few years, so I'll be able to use that. Awesome. For my website. Good. Great. Excited. Thanks for being on. We appreciate you. Love you. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you Maggie. Absolutely. Thank God bless you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye bye. That's always so much fun. And now we have Barbara Winter, correct? Okay, we do. Yes. And what's yep. uh, what 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 is she pitching today? She also she's got a nonfiction, she calls it nonfiction memoir. Um, and as I read through her um description, I see it's really a book about spiritual warfare. And she's mm -hmm. gonna help people really understand um how to identify just um really on a home level, you know, sure. right within your home, um, how to address warfare and yeah. mm -hmm. so you know it'll, I'll be interested to hear.
I'm excited about that already because we we're so good at teaching. Like we're not real good at teaching like what we call ground level warfare. Like how you how do you apply it in the home? We're always like, re, and I'm not against this, but you know, principalities and regional stuff and like really big. T- and we do need that. But yeah. man, you gotta train the family. So Barbara, here we go. Get ready. This is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> 